You also want to make sure that you're kind of leaning forward a little bit just to maximize the amount of room baby has to move around in there and, and we can get the ball rolling. So once you have that position established, what you're going to do is start to rotate yourself on the birthing ball. Try not to move your upper body so much. You want to accomplish this move using your hips as much as possible. Hello moms and dads and welcome back to Nurse Onye Teaches. My name is Onye If this is your first time here, you are most welcome. Make sure you look around at some of the other videos that I have uploaded to this channel as I am certain that they may answer your questions or address your needs. I would also love it if you join this growing community of empowered learners. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and then turn on your notification bell because that is how you are made aware of every time a new video is uploaded. Now, as a woman begins to near the end of her pregnancy, a lot of questions begin to pop in her head like, is my baby the right weight? Am I going to be able to push correctly? But a, one of the major questions that a lot of moms have is, is my baby head down in preparation for birth? As you can tell by the title of today's video, I am going to be demonstrating some maneuvers or positions that women can try to kind of work their babies down into the head down position. And these maneuvers are most effective if your baby is in the breech position. So make sure you confirm first that your baby is in the breech position before you attempt these maneuvers. Now, before I jump into today's video, I just want to make sure that I stress that you are not to use the content of this video to treat yourself or to diagnose yourself. Make sure that you are working with a doctor or a healthcare provider who knows your personal health care needs so that when they design a plan of care, it addresses those needs. Also, know your own limits. Do not attempt any of these activities if you have balance issues or you have any restrictions from your healthcare provider. If you are doing these activities and you start to feel lightheaded or dizzy or you feel like you're going to faint, make sure you stop and rest. Be very hydrated before you start any of these activities. And then make sure that your spouse or a support person is there to assist you in and out of these positions. We certainly don't want you to hurt yourself. I want these exercises tried as safely as possible to maximize the positive outcomes for both mom and baby. Also, try to do these activities when your baby is awake. Just like adults, babies have sleep wake cycles in the womb. If you catch your baby when he or her is he or she is awake, then there's a greater chance that your movement will cause your baby to sort of start going in a position that is favorable with delivery. Also, choose a nice sturdy position to do these exercises in. Do not find yourself compromising your health because your your position is kind of wonky or not balanced. You will also find that a lot of these maneuvers can double as exercises that pregnant women can do throughout their pregnancy to relax their ligaments and stretch their joints and maximize the amount of pelvic room that they have so that their baby can begin to turn his or herself in preparation for delivery. And without further ado, let's jump right into today's video. Okay. So the first move we are going to be demonstrating today is known as pelvic rotations using a birthing ball. If you do not have a birthing ball, you can still do the pelvic rotations. Just make sure that you are doing the same motions that you're going to see me do here on this ball while you stand. So what you're going to do is while making sure you are on a nice sturdy surface and that your feet are not slippery, you're going to sit on the birthing ball. Once you sit on the birthing ball, the first thing you're going to do is adjust your position so that you increase your pelvic width and space, giving the baby room to turn. You also want to make sure that you're kind of leaning forward a little bit just to maximize the amount of room baby has to move around in there and, and we can get the ball rolling. So once you have that position established, what you're going to do is start to rotate yourself on the birthing ball. Try not to move your upper body so much. You want to accomplish this move using your hips as much as possible. And you will do about 10 to 15 rotation going one way and then you're gonna stop and you're gonna do 10 to 15 rotations going the other way. If you strive to do this about two to three times a day, it increases the chance that your baby will flip and go head down. 
The next move that I'm going to demonstrate is known as the breech or pelvic tilt. It pretty much does the same thing as the first exercise, which is it allows your body to maximize the amount of room in your pelvis so that your baby can begin to move around. So what you're going to do is make sure you have a nice pillow to rest your head on. And then you are going to lay down with your head on the pillow. And you establish comfort. Go ahead and pull your the heels of your feet up towards your bottom and then place your hands flat on the floor. When you have accomplished this, the next thing you're going to want to do is tilt your pelvis up. So what you're going to do is pick up your pelvis from the floor and hold it in, in a sort of straight alignment with your body. And what this does is it allows your baby to sort of have gravity against it working in that breech position and with your pelvis open make sure your knees are nice and open with your pelvis open that begins to cause your baby and gravity to work in your favor to turn that baby around hold this position for as long as possible i would recommend 10 to 20 minutes and try to do this two to three times a day to maximize the opportunity of turning your baby the next position moms can use to try to turn their baby the natural way is known as the forward leaning or knee to chest or child's pose position. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a pillow and you're going to set it in front of you and you are going to lean down on your elbows and relax your arms, kind of cross them over. Make sure your knees are pulled up nicely to your chest and with your knees pulled up to your chest, you're going to rest your head on your arms. With your head rested on your arms, go ahead and relax your hip and you can rock side to side. What that does is it allows your pelvic room to become as open as possible. And with gravity once again working with you because your pelvis is tilted and open maximally, you begin to create a favorable chance for your baby to turn around. The next position can be accomplished right as soon as you come out of that child's pose. So you pick up yourself from the pillow and take the palms of your hand and rest them flat on a surface. Make sure your hands and your knees are about equal width apart and you want to relax your hip joint as much as possible. Now what you do here is you begin to rock back and forth to try to ease up all the muscles and the tension that may be in the hip region. You can also sway from side to side just to help those ligaments and everything begin to stretch and get comfortable. This movement can also be a little irritating to baby and that can get your little one moving and in position for delivery. Now this next position is one that is recommended to moms across the world for when they sleep. You are told to lie down on your left hand side to encourage the flow of blood throughout your body and to limit the chances of suppressing oxygen supply to your baby. This position can also be used to encourage your baby to go down head down in preparation for birth. So what you are going to do is get two pillows and what you're going to do is lay down on the first pillow and get yourself nice and comfortable. Once you have established your position with that first pillow, take the next pillow and wedge it between your knees. What this does is open up your pelvic area. That increased room now gives your baby space to turn around in and him or her can begin to flip themselves around in preparation to go head down to be born. Now, two more maneuvers that moms can try to encourage their babies to go head down are light and sound therapy. Light therapy works by a mom getting a flashlight or a torch and turning it on and then pointing it towards her abdominal pelvic area. By doing this, babies that are sensitive to light in the womb will begin to follow that light so that they can see what's going on. And that light then becomes like a, a, a navigation tool to turn your baby head down. Sound therapy works much the same. You take some headphones and you take the music and you put it in your lower abdomen or in your pelvic area and your baby will begin to rotate in favor of where the sound is loudest this effectively helping him or her turn head down keep in mind as previously mentioned that you should try these activities when your baby is awake and alert and moving around if your baby is asleep he or she may not be as willing to turn around so by you waiting for when your baby is alert you increase the likelihood of your baby responding to the activities that you use if these maneuvers do not effectively help you to turn your baby head down, 
Talk with your provider. He or she may recommend acupuncture, which is the use of specialized needles to open up the pelvic area and maximize the amount of room baby has, encouraging your baby to turn head down. If you are more advanced in your pregnancy and would still love to deliver via the vaginal route, your doctor may perform a procedure known as a sternocephalic version, where he or she manually turns the baby in the womb head down. Once this is accomplished, then you can attempt a vaginal delivery. Make sure you discuss the risks and the benefits attached with ECVs with your doctor so that you make an informed decision. Now, if you have learned something from the content of this video, do not fail to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you also hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell. Also, if you know somebody who can benefit from this content, do not fail to share it with them. Make sure you join this growing community of empowered learners who are active participants in their own maternity journey. I wish you a safe, healthy, and happy pregnancy, and I wish you a smooth delivery and safe and swift recovery. Until the next time, be blessed.